The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about you, Cowboys? Yeah! This is Mick Shots, streaming live on DallasCowboys.com and the official Dallas Cowboys app. Now, here are Bill Jones, Everson Walls, and Mickey Spagnola. And it's time for a trade deadline edition of Mick Shots from inside the SWBC podcast studio <laughs> here at Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. A tamper free edition of the trade. Tampa free. I like that. Tamper like free. Tamper free edition Day of the my trade beating heart. deadline as we are now 90 minutes away. We don't need no 89 stinking, minutes away. We don't need no stinking trade. From the trade deadline. Right. So when we finish, it'll be 30 minutes till breaking news, right? Is that what you're saying? That's exactly, yeah. Or 45 minutes. I, 45, dare, say, yeah. I yeah. dare say we will have nothing to report. There I, will be nothing to report after we go off the I would, uh, I agree, I would with agree with you. Yeah. I think Jerry Jones well, agreed with okay, you already. So, so why are people going to stick with us for 45 minutes? you got to build <laughs> it up. We've got all yeah, we got stuff. kind of stuff. <laughs> we got mix shot rent. That's you right. Know what I mean? Forget that, man. We got the rent. It's called a tease. <laughs> oh, see, TV guy. Right, he <laughs> TV think, guy, he Bill. Think everybody, he doesn't think anybody else listens to Jerry Jones but us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, okay, so we believe it when Jerry says that? Well, Come he on, said man. that. <laughs> They're not pursuing anything, but if the phone rings, there you I'll go. answer it. Okay. He did say that Dak was going to play this weekend, this he past did. weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He had us all fired up. You know what? You're right, Bill. I can't believe anything else that this organization says. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Except here on Mix Shots. That's right, so man. since you brought up the trade, the, yeah. I was going to ask you, do you ever remember when you were here playing – a mid-season trade, like something that just astonished you? No, not necessarily mid-season trades, but I'm sure we had some. some I mean, you had things you picked up, right. guys, maybe. When was your cuts. last year we here? Cuts. We had cuts. When was your last year here? 89. Okay. Yeah, it was horrible. Was there not a mid-season trade in 89? I'm thinking back. Yeah, a rather large mid-season trade in 89? 89. Mid-season? Oh, well, Herschel. Herschel? Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. That was but I meant they, the, not that, on the trade deadline yeah. necessarily. I, I maybe. sort of met no, somebody. No, no, you're right. Like you're they, right. They you're got right. somebody. Yeah. Yeah. What was that, 80, I, I, was I that think 87? they got more than somebody out of that trade. Well, they did. <laughs> I, I get you. Okay. So, yeah, we sent him away. We sent him away and got nine, right? One for nine? Is that what it was? Or, no, or eighteen, it was... however many you want to multiply by the draft picks. Well, it was it was it was five, initially one for nine. Five I players, I think it was. It was, mm-hmm. and, and including the the, the draft and picks. And then the and then we found picks. out later right. that uh, the draft the players were tied to the draft picks, mm-hmm. and Minnesota made the mistake of thinking the Cowboys wanted to get good right away, so we're going to give you all these scrap players that we don't Minnesota want. Minnesota used to make mistakes right? like that all the time. And, like and the so, and Jimmy was like, no, we wanted the, <laughs> we wanted the draft choices. Uh, and you remember the, the one guy didn't want to come, the running back, uh, Darren Nelson? Yes. He refused to come, and Jimmy goes, "Okay, that's fine. We'll yeah. just take his." And his, where did he go? Draft choice. He went back to Minnesota. He never he, left. He wound up and going it, to the San Diego Chargers that year. Yep. Oh, okay. All right. Can you name who the players the Cowboys got in the Herschel Walker trade? David Howard. David Howard, Ike Holt, Jesse Solomon, Jesse Solomon, Darren yep. Nelson, mm-hmm. and there was a defensive end and? that was. I tell you the story. I forgot his name. Want me to tell you the name? Yes. And then you can tell the story? Yes. Alex Stewart. Alex Stewart. Do not remember him. So he he did nothing here, right? But uh, Ed Werder, I think he, he, he wrote this, that Alex Stewart looked like Tarzan <laughs> and played like Jay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> and a day or so later, we're walking through the locker, you know, the outer part of the locker room at the ranch, and here comes Alex Stewart. Uh-oh. And he sees 
Word. Ed, and he basically confronted him very loudly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but you know what? Ed was right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was right. And sometimes uh, if you tell the truth, it hurts. Yeah. I mean, you can be angry about it. Maybe Ed shouldn't have said it, but we're big boys. You know, we understand that we get into this for a particular reason, and there are going to be certain consequences. And when you play like crap, you know you're a bad player. Sometimes the truth It just hurts. comes out because he looked the part, yes. as I remember. And the fact that we don't remember him. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> sure Bill's already looking up his stats right now. <laughs> see, oh, where I've got, see where he ended yeah, up, where right? where he ended up, what happened to him. I mean, because I don't even remember the guy, if, period. If, if you think about it, David Howard was a nice player. Yes, he was. Jesse Solomon uh, Jesse was a nice Solomon, player. Jesse Solomon, he yes, couldn't he keep was. his mouth shut, but he was a nice player. <laughs> That's why Jesse he was my boy. He fit right in. That's right. right. That's Jesse. right. He and Everson. Awesome Jesse. He and Everson were. <laughs> we were buddies, man. He would come to my locker and, and we'd fuss all the time, yeah. And then, and then, and then I Colt made it for till through ninety two. I Colt made it through the 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 eighty nine. Oh my God! Disaster fiasco. Right, and ended up. Did he get a ring? He got a ring. He, he got played a ring. because Proud he of him. remember yep, the through ninety two early in the NFC title game. Uh, Kevin Smith got hurt mm -hmm. the first play or second play, and they put Ike in, yeah. and that's when they threw the deep pass to Jerry Jerry Rice. Yeah. It would have been a touchdown, but there was some sort of holding or something nullified mm -hmm. it. Next play, Kevin Smith was back in the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Ike Holt, um, you know, I know I had a very unorthodox style that Tom Landry did not appreciate, and I get that, uh, but Ike Holt's, his his technique was probably worse than mine. No, no, probably. It was. He lined up deeper than I did. At least I had a backpedal. Ike Holt would back up 10 yards. He would line up at 10 yards and wouldn't move. <laughs> he let him come to yeah, him. Yeah, he let him come to him at 10 <laughs> yards. I mean, you just don't do that. I mean, even the, the, the DBs this weekend were closer than that. So you were already gone. I think I've told this story before, 90 or 91. Yeah, right? I was going in. Cowboys in didn't have anything of a pass rush. And remember how good the Eagles were mm -hmm. at that time with that front four? Yeah. And so we're in the locker room. Troy remembers too, yeah, yeah. We're in the locker room <laughs> one day, and they're talking about the – we were talking about just kind of shooting the bull with him, and there was a couple other guys uh, about their Eagles pass rush. And he goes, yeah. He goes, let me show you how their DBs play. So he gets down in his stance, got his hands on his knees, and he he starts backpedaling. And he goes, one, two, three. Okay, man, I'm good. Because the play would have been over, right? He only had to cover for three seconds. Like, right? like Chicago Bears right. defensive yeah, backs. Yes, exactly. Yes. And it was the funniest thing. I, yeah, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, we used to get so jealous with that. Of course, we had Doomsday at the time in the, in the 80s, Doomsday too, I guess you might call it. But there were times when, you know, the flex defense holds your D-line back. Yeah. And there were times, that with the, especially with the play action, we were sitting ducks back there. And we would get so jealous when we would see how Mike Downs was forced because he was part of that run defense. The free safety is part of the run defense. That's the kind of responsibility Mike had. He had to be close to the line of scrimmage on alignment. He's no more than 10 yards. Then you look at the other DBs and other safeties. We can't even see them in the they're film. Still, they're, they're out of the, pit, out, the well, TV screen, They only screen, have 10 right? people on the field because the safety <laughs> is 20 yards back. And Mike Downs used to hate that because he did not have that luxury. Now, Jesse Solomon was good. Yes, he was. Um, and he cost me. He was fast. He so cost fast. me my mustache, by the way. Oh, yeah? In 1990, right? He was holding out. Yeah. And we were in San Diego for a week. Uh, and uh, I had been corresponding to him back and forth, checking, you coming, you're not coming. So I called him one day, and he told me, he goes, yeah, he goes, I bought my, my plane ticket. I'm coming tomorrow. Well, I get in an <laughs> argument about his status with Mike Fisher. And – and so I think I've got inside information, right? And it's like, yeah, I'll bet you he's coming. No, he's not. And he goes, what do you want to bet? I said, I'll bet my mustache, right? Well, Jesse changed his mind. <laughs> Yeah. And he didn't come. He had the ticket, and he didn't show. You know, I uh, gotta think that he knew, he he was aware of that. <laughs> yeah, right. Like we just, had a bet. I'll 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 screw, I'll screw this guy. Just to right? screw you. And okay. then when he showed up, we were back. I think he didn't show up until training camp was over. We mm -hmm. were back here, 
And he showed up the first day, and I think we were interviewing Jerry or interviewing him, and the two came together, and Jerry was going to, like, you know, bury the hatchet and say, okay, welcome back. And he shook his hand and said, good to be here with you, boss. And he called him boss like three times. And I was like, oh, yeah. boy. Mm-hmm. I said, this isn't going to last very long. <laughs> Okay, um, Ooh, just real quick. And I, David Howard ended up getting trade with Lockhart, right, yes, to did. New to England. The Patriots. Yeah. All right, just real quick, I'll run through the draft. I mean, okay. the trade. Yeah. Okay, yeah, those those players, and here are the draft picks, okay? These are the unconditional picks. They got The Cowboys got Minnesota's first-round pick in 90 and second-round pick in 90 and their sixth-round pick in 90. So three draft picks that were unconditional. All right, and they the Cowboys also got Minnesota's first round pick in '91, conditional on cutting Solomon. <laughs> Minnesota's second round pick in '91, conditional on cutting Howard. Minnesota's first round pick in '92, conditional on cutting Holt. And Minnesota's second round pick in '92, condition met by trading away Nelson. And Minnesota's third round pick in '92, conditional on cutting Stewart. It's amazing that they still have a team to this day. And who was the GM? Who's making Mike Lynn? Mike Lynn. Yeah. Why? He still has a job? Oh, no. He's... <laughs> oh, no. no, no he's... So, it, so when it was announced, it was announced as these, those five players, and, and one of them turned out not showing up here, and three picks, the first and second, and then the sixth round pick the next year. I'm not okay, even sure Herschel. those picks were announced. Okay. But, but those were the – Those were the picks that Those were the unconditioned. The yeah, that, right. And so, with those picks, so, and I don't know what the timeline was on when those players had to be cut by in order for the pick to take priority over the player. I think they had to, if they were on, but whatever the, the roster, deadline was, Jimmy was cutting that player yeah, to get that pick, and they actually, <laughs> they basically they actually cut them all and then just brought them back, mm. like because they. Cleared yeah. waivers. Yeah, there you whatever. go. Because I so remember the... what happened. So this happened. It, it, it might have been. Well, I don't know. Say it was a Tuesday, right? Uh, and I remember Wednesday um, when Herschel was leaving. Uh, he walked out the back to the players' parking lot at, at the ranch, and uh, everybody started running after him, right, to, to try to catch up with him, right. And I started running, and I'm going, you know what? I am too old to be running after a damn player. I am. Not, I, I'll. I'll find out what he said. I am not doing chasing yeah, him down yeah. like that, right? So Friday, and I think it was Channel Twenty One. They wanted to do a writers roundtable about the trade, and so we all get on there and we just pan the thing. Just, just, just. Brutalized. The How trade, do you trade right? Herschel Walker? Yeah, it's the be- it's the only asset you had, right? <laughs> Everybody else is getting old, and you, what do you? And oh, we, I'd love to have a copy of that. And we we all thought <laughs> we all thought they were getting these players, not the draft picks. Yeah. That part hadn't come out yet, uh-huh. right? So the next day, Norm Hitchkiss reports that part of the trade was the Cowboys are going to send Steve Walsh to Minnesota at the end of the year. And I had found out on Friday that that was absolutely inaccurate. That wasn't that wasn't right, right? Well, I get a call from the paper, and they go, well, we need a comment from Jerry. I said, well, we don't need a comment from Jerry. I'm telling you, I found out, and we've already written it, that that's not part of the trade. Okay. No, we still need something from Jerry. Okay. So I get Jerry on the phone, right, mm-hmm. tell him what indeed. Well, he had seen the show Friday night. <sighs> And he let me have it like nobody else has, right? Because what? Because of how we criticized the trade. Ah, you right? panned it. I got well, it. Oh, yeah. We, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were all over it, right? And, I, I mean, he just went on and on well, and see, on. Well, was, see, he was, he was especially hurt by you because yes. you're his child. No, no, I was not his child. <laughs> not yet. Not, not even close. Yet. Okay, all right. <laughs> and, you uh, had to work your way in the way uh, you are now. Well, it was a long, <laughs> it was decade, I'll guarantee uh-huh. you that. I couldn't. I never worked my way back in. And uh, <laughs> and so he he just went on its rant and he used every word you know not in the king's English right because everybody said did Cherry ever chew you out and I go oh yeah. yes he did <laughs> and so he got to the end and I said so I said so. 
Do you want to comment on that? <laughs> Come write anything you want. <laughs> well, I think he already gave you quotes. Y'all yeah, like, you just, it's uh, yeah, up to you if you want to use, use them. Right, <laughs> yeah. So that was, that was the, the, that's the, uh, the other thing I remember of that trade. Uh, so, that yeah, was, that was a and that was, season trade. That was 19. But how about before that, before Jerry got mm-hmm. here? Were there – Mid-season trades that you remember? No, I, I, I remember. The I, remember season, I remember just the, the acquisition of Herschel Walker. Well, that wasn't that was a trade. They but just it was still ended up that it happened. Was a, it was time. a trading camp, though. Yeah, and to, you know, it was it was huge. That was the the only thing close to it, because at that time you're bringing in Herschel Walker and you have Tony Dorsett. Right. So to us, yeah, that, that was, was a big huge. deal. And that, at that time, they weren't really doing. They weren't really trading anybody. They would just cut them. So they traded before the season started. Um, so this was before you were there, uh, when Too Tall went to go box. Yes, and they they <laughs> it were was 1980, I believe. He 79 was the season he boxed, and so he came back came in back 80, in 80. But yes. they had already traded for um, oh the defensive end from the Colts, the big guy. Bubba Smith. No, no, no. no, his, no. His John Dutton. John Dutton. John, oh, yes. big John. Very good. Yeah. yeah. John Dutton, right? And uh, and so that was a trade I remember. But other than that, it was just kind of getting rid of guys, not really trading guys. Yeah. That's right. There, there were trades. Not at the they trade just, deadline. No, they, there was none of that. It was all about if they didn't want you, something happened, they would just cut you. And bringing in Herschel was the exception. Because we really didn't just bring in anybody like that ever. You're right. And especially you bring in a guy to replace Tony Dorsett, future Hall of Famer. This guy's about to lead your, the, the, his, his – his, I think he had passed 10,000 in 85. And by the time we got to 87, you know, I mean, he's working on being one of the, the leading rushers in, in history. So for that to happen, I just thought that was you know what the, the, a bunch of crap. The That's, acquisition uh, as part of that – when the USFL folded, uh, that got overshadowed was Nate, because they picked up Nate off of off USFL, off the USFL, and he for some reason I think uh, the Washington at the time Redskins. Uh, what did they have to do with that? No, they had draft. They he they had signed Nate as an undrafted free Washington. agent as a rookie in '83. Yes, so he and Babe Loffenberg were there, and then he got cut. And then he ended up in the USFL for, what, a year or two? I just remember coming into the locker room. I believe we were in Thousand Oaks. Yes, you were. And uh, I remember seeing this big old brother. I'm like, who in the heck is this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, he, and he looks so humble. You know, Nate, he looks humble till he gets out there and starts whipping right. your butt. Right, yeah. And so he just sitting there just looking very unassuming. And I just kind of walk right by him like, uh, man, who is this guy? You know, I, I really just didn't know what to expect. And then you course, remember he got nicknamed the kitchen because he kitchen. was so yeah, big. He was so because he was bigger than the fridge. And, and I must admit, it wasn't impressive because he was that big. Yeah. And so you're thinking he can't be any good. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I mean, you're just thinking that, right? I mean, that's just first impression. We were talking about <laughs> we were talking about how players can have an effect on the coaching staff, like tell them, hey, this guy can do this or this guy can do that. He goes, I might not have been here today had it not been for Randy White and John Dutton uh, and who else? He pointed out somebody else on the defensive line. He said they actually went to Coach Landry and said, hey, this guy's got something. Yeah, he yeah. said they saved me because yeah. he said I was so big and fat. Yeah. He goes, the, you know, they saw the potential. Yeah, because at that time, remember, Tom didn't want anybody on the offensive no. line more than two eighty. Man, if they were two eighty, they were huge. That and this guy much. comes in at three forty. Yeah, I mean Rafferty, Tom Rafferty, the center. I think he was around two hundred sixty pounds. Yeah. And little did we know 32 years ago that on trade deadline day, which is also election day, that Herschel Walker would be running for United (laughs) States Senate one day. (laughs) That's pretty good. That's a a huge circle we just tied. But but it's a necessary circle. That is very good, William. I got to admit, because that's uh, that's just as ridiculous as all of this crap that we're talking about. And Bill, what ticket is he running on? (laughs) The Trump ticket. (laughs) I think, I think everyone can figure that out. Yeah, the, the guy he played for. Well, he's probably before he became a Dallas. Before he became a Dallas Cowboy, he's still the Jersey paid. Generals. He's paid by him, right? Yeah. He's got a yeah. personal service. He wants contract. his money's worth. So yeah, you get out there and run for Congress. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, that's a trip down memory lane. And now we're we going to get back into on what Mick might they have done on have trade. Okay, down. that's yeah, coming memory. up next. <laughs> Honey, big news. Gary, are you okay? Oh, I'm not Gary anymore. I'm Jackie Flash. What? See, I want the latest smartphone, but the best deals are only for new customers. So to get a new customer deal, I changed my name to Jackie Flash. Okay, but the best smartphone deals at AT&T are for everyone, new and existing customers. That's huge. Then guess who's getting a deal? Is it Jackie Flash? Jackie Flash. It's not complicated. At AT&T, our best smartphone deals are for everyone. Restrictions apply. Visit att.com for details. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want great, fresh tasting, ready to serve guacamole for your home gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yo Quiero, Yo Quiero Guacamole. It's game day. You know what that means. First, kebab prep. Steak, pepper, onion, steak, pepper, onion. Next, a counterclockwise lap around the room. Now the lucky grease-stained jersey goes on. And lastly, the dance. You know the one. This is a game day ritual no matter where you are. Whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com and keep the tradition alive and well. Hotels.com, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Back back to Mick Shots. Head to AT&T Stadium on Saturday, November 6th to experience Rally Day 4, presented by SeatGeek. Take a tour of the stadium, play games, get autographs from the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, and more. Visit attstadium.com slash rallydays for tickets and more information. You're not just cheerleaders. I mean, you know, you have players out there too, right? You? Yeah, I've been out there. Well, how come they don't put that? See, I told you, whoever writes these things. It's, it's, It's players as well. I mean, you know, they, they, they give us all little slots. I've had mine already. Get autographs from Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders and Everson Walls. <laughs> not, not Everson. No, I'd love to go out there again. But, no, I'm just shocked they didn't mention players because definitely players are there to sign autographs. Well, I guess it depends what they're going out there to, <laughs> to get autographs. I guess. Okay. Yes. Where, where are we going? What do you uh, think? Well, all right, we got one trade that came down today that of a notable player, Melvin Ingram, is traded from Pittsburgh to Kansas City for a sixth-round draft pick. And I looked at his stats, and he was doing absolutely nothing for the Steelers. And well, so we he, saw the Chiefs play last night against yes. the Giants. So he could, they can use all the help uh, they can get go. because the Giants sh- almost could have, should have won that game. I was picking the Giants to win before well, the game. They came I told my son they're going to win this game. Uh, if they would have got out of their own way. Jalen Smith. Right, we got some breaking Jaylen news here Smith. from Everson yeah. Walls. Yes, yeah, Jalen Smith. The Packers. After what? That's two weeks, right? He Cow- played. He Cowboys. was there a month, and he played two games. Mm-hmm. Didn't play this last Thursday night. He was inactive. And my stat sheet says in two games, 27 snaps and one tackle. Uh, do the Cowboys have a need for a linebacker right now? <laughs> What's the status on Jabril Cox? He is out. He's tore his ACL and will have what? surgery. Yeah. Uh-uh. Oh, man. Yeah. So the Cowboys have a need for a and linebacker. And Bernard Francis will take his place on the 53-man <laughs> I was going to say, you want Jalen to come I, back and go on the I, team I, or punt cover? I trolled. I don't trolled, keep I, poking. I trolled on Twitter. <laughs> I, uh, Did you get responses? I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, what do we want that guy for? <laughs> it was, I'd retweeted Schefter or whoever about Jalen being released, and I said, uh, Cowboys need a linebacker or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but when you see something like that, I guess it's justification for making the move. Right. Initially, it was a you know, surprise to some people, not to us in this room. 
but uh, also the disappointment from Van Der Esch and things of that nature. I get it, man. That's your boy. You know, your teammates got good. But, man, if he ain't balling, he ain't balling. And that's and my, just all this, too. And you, you, know, you hate to see him go, but you got to know you are a better defense without him in the lineup. Yes, and and I don't know if they were playing him to possibly trade him uh, to, for somebody to see, oh, look what he's doing, because he did nothing to qualify the snaps he was getting. Um, and he was taking snaps from other people. And as a, as a, you know, as a human being, you know, we hate to see people have to uproot their lives and yeah. move here and move there and things of that nature. But, you know, as much as we make fun of it, it's just a part of the game. It doesn't make it any easier for the player to have to move. And, you know, I was blessed when I, when I left. I went to New York. But, you know, my, my, my wife is from here. We grew up together. So it's safer for them to stay home. I don't have yeah. to take them with me everywhere I go. Transfer That's the blessing that I had. All that yeah. stuff. They yeah. didn't have to get out of school and things of that nature. Everyone's different. But at the same time, it's a business. Well, you know that's it. So this a this is for all the people that wanted to make a deal about it. Oh, you're messing up the team chemistry. Oh, what are you going to do in the locker room? You know, well, how are these players? And, you know, and my response was, they got to worry about number one. Yes, they ain't worried about number two. And three, they also got to know that he wasn't making yes, plays. Yes, they knew. That's it. The players in the locker room goes understand. back to what I said. Players know the players thing about know. Nate, right? Yes, sir. And and they know so film don't lie. <laughs> yes, film certainly doesn't lie. Well, I learned that in high school. Yeah, no, I mm-hmm. learned that with Tom Landry. Boy, he mm-hmm. would run that joker back and forth on you, man. Like, hey, is your thumb stuck? Why don't you move on with the play? No, he's got to make a point, and that point will be made, and everyone in there will know it. Yeah, and that's the thing. He sends a message through film. Black and white. That's right, baby. Back then it was black <laughs> and white. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no no Jalen. And, you know, Jerry mentioned, Mike mentioned, Stephen mentioned that, you know, they weren't going to be active in the trade market unless somebody called. And, and as Jerry Pat. And Jerry said, every time you call, the price goes up. I remember I learned that from Bob Ackles because they were in a dispute with somebody. Wow, Bob Ackles. Remember wow, that? yes, yeah. I do. He was the personnel director, <laughs> kind of managing the cap and yeah. all that. And uh, they were in a dispute with somebody. And I said, well, have you talked to him or his agent? And he goes, no. I go, well, why not? He goes, because every time I pick up the phone, <laughs> I'm, I'm spending money. Like it's going to get more expensive, <laughs> right. right? That is very good. I like and, that. And so like Jerry said, if they're calling you, oh, mm-hmm. okay, we can then listen. In the, in but if I'm calling point. for something, mm-hmm. he goes, now it's getting expensive. That's right. So you don't want to be that guy. And, and you know, and I don't know that they have – a, a serious need to to trade something, you know. Bill talked about the quarterback thing, and probably before, had, before Sunday, but but, but that got solidified but before Sunday the, before the second half. Yeah, right. Half before, time, you're probably thinking, oh, see, I before knew the I last two minutes about. of the game. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, think about it. No, you're probably right. If the Cowboys go three and out. Okay, on that last possession. Yeah. Okay. What are we talking about after the game? And they they fall 16-13 to Minnesota. You got whatever. the bat phone. The bat phone sitting right yeah, there. and baby. you're looking for a veteran quarterback. <laughs> that right? bat mm-hmm. phone is going to ring. Right. Yeah, so, I, I, and he didn't play poorly up until no, then. But they the, say, Halftime, the number one scoring offense in the league had three points. Mm. And, and Minnesota's defense wasn't all that. No, they weren't. Mm. And we found that out as mm-hmm. the game progressed. So other than the quarterback position – you know, everybody wants to know, well, what other position do you need? And I'm going, well, I need a defensive end. Oh, but Marcus Lawrence is coming back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I could yeah. use another defense tackle. Oh, Gallimore. no, wait, Gallimore is right. coming back, right? Mm-hmm. Um, wide receiver, you got Gallup coming back. And God forbid you don't trade positions of strength to get a darn draft choice because right. the guy's – Contracts no, up next year. No. This team's six and one. You sense something special just might be happening here. Why would you do anything to diminish your roster for the future? The and future is you, you now. You just came off of probably the most, like you say, special. This was the most special game this year. Right. It had it. It had its own uniqueness. Over the as we talked about the Patriots game. Patriots game was amazing, but this one 
was just as special in its own right because of the backup situation, because of how we could have just gone in there, and, and also the fact that it caused us not to make another move on this team that we did not need to make. Right. Absolutely. So why would you trade away anything? Somebody's like, well, Tennessee needs a running back. You might get a second for Tony Pollard. Okay, fine. And Emmett, uh, Emmett, uh, <laughs> Ezekiel gets hurt, right? And then what? Right. Clement? Seriously? Right. So you would need a running back. So no, why would you do that? You you you're you're in the catbird seat right now. We we went from being the team that had the worst luck ever to where everyone thinks that we've got this luxury to sit Dak until the playoffs start. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, we went from that team. We were the worst team. With the, the worst stuff was happening to us. I see it happening to every other team now. You saw what happened with KC last night. I like that. Looked like the Cowboys last year or mm-hmm. uh, two years ago. The injuries. Yeah, not just the injuries, but the goofy plays. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, he's trying to throw the ball to to number one. Number nineteen thinks it's going to him. He reaches up and t- he deflects Mahomes' pass that was going to number one. <laughs> and and it, it ended up being an interception. That's the goofiness that we were looking at the last. You couple think of years. you think the catch that <laughs> Cooper made on that last drive? It's all karma, baby. It, it bounces it's off the DB, bounces back. off his it's hands, comes in, back, and baby. it's a big reception. It's, it's all that would not back. have happened last year. No, time. or right. the year before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or the last 24 years before that. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Because this is a special year. Um, All right. uh, The best news, though, to come out of Mike McCarthy's press conference yesterday. That Dak's ready to go? Dak is going to be a full (laughs) go when they had their first full practice of the week on Thursday. Well, that's the padded, if he gets, the padded practice. You're right, right. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Cuz they'll practice. If all goes tomorrow. well on Wednesday right. and he'll be a full it's expected that he'll be a full go on Thursday. And and I think everybody needs to understand that what he did before the game on Sunday was what he had been doing all Every week. Time, yeah. It wasn't it wasn't like all of a sudden they said, "Oh no, Let's he's work not him ready." Out. Everyone yeah. was thinking that this was a, yeah. a workout. Yeah, it was his he was rehab. Ready. He would have done that even if they didn't think he was going to play, right. right? And that's probably why they brought him to the game in the first place mm-hmm. so he could work out with Britt. Uh, before the game. And, and also, too. And that's what he did. Also the fool of the Vikings. Yeah, well, I'm sure. And Jerry talked about <laughs> right, that, too, sure. by the way, about the importance of not giving somebody. He said, unless they've got a camera up there watching your practice, you know, you don't need to give them any. And I'm thinking, yeah, you're the one that would spill the beans. <laughs> you're spilling it now. Be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> so he goes, yeah, we, we don't need to give them any competitive advantage, right? So that was pretty funny. But it sounds like he's – He is ready to go. So really, the only thing that probably we need to discuss is the left tackle position. Okay, so. Want to do that? uh, We'll do that when we come back. How about that? A tease from me. Mix shots in just a moment. (laughs) At Smoothie King, we are blending goodness to fuel your greatness. Every blend is crafted to help you achieve your health and fitness goals. Smoothie King uses only whole fruits and organic veggies. You'll never find sugary syrups or artificial flavors, colors, or preservatives. And unlike some other smoothie places, there are zero grams of added sugar in many of our blends. Smoothie King is proud to be the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. Place your order in the app or online for pickup or delivery. Smoothie King, rule the day. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want, great, fresh-tasting, ready-to-serve guacamole for your home-gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yokiero, Yokiero guacamole. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Hi, I'm Clint Tillerson with United Ag and Turf. Before you can park yourself in front of the game, park yourself in a John Deere and power through your chores. 
Our Land Run package is a 1025R, 25 horsepower tractor with a loader, rotary cutter, and a box blade for $229 a month. And the price you see is the price you'll pay. No surprises. So don't miss another kickoff. Visit unitedagandturf.com. Offer ends February 1st, 2021. Restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Now let's get to work. Back, back, back. to Mick Shots. Be the first to receive new offers, event info, and more when you sign up to receive text messages from the team. Text COWBOYS to NFLDAL, that's 635325, to receive 10% off your next Pro Shop order. Message frequency may vary. Messages and data rates may apply. <laughs> you got to do that part real fast. Yeah, uh, faster you, you than know, that. You got to you got <laughs> real low and real <laughs> fast. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> we'll, we'll work on that. Yeah, we got to work on that. <laughs> That's where Douglas Bericlo comes in. That's right. He speeds up your... Right, right. Make it sound right. That's right. All right. Um, I'm going to continue to check the trade deadline okay. Twitter as we go along here. Let's. Uh, you want to talk some Randy Gregory? Yes, let's do that. Randy Gregory last MVP. night. MVP. There you MVP. go. MVP. Got his fifth sack of the season. I predicted he would get 10, so he's halfway there in seven games. He's got a chance. Got a chance. Uh, he was on Cowboys Hour last night with Brad Sham and Shannon Gross, and Brad uh, – Start talking to him about his maturity, where he is, not only on the team but in life, and talked about him having more of a leadership role. And uh, Randy said it kind of came naturally. Uh, It wasn't forced. But here's what he had to say about him becoming a leader on this team. Naturally it happened. Uh, I think that's the the best way. I know I was kind of put in a leadership council and things like that, but – you know, the best thing for me is is kind of let me lead my own way and naturally grow into that 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 spot, that role. And um, you know, I can't say enough about Coach McCarthy, um, you know, Rob Davis, AD, DQ, everyone, um, as far as coaches go, and and front office believing in me to 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 be that type of leader. Um, and I'm still learning every day. I have to check myself, you know, sometimes when I want to take the shortcut and. I have to realize there's a lot of guys that are looking at me. If they see me take that shortcut, maybe they take it too. And um, that's not championship football. So uh, I'm growing into that role still. There's a lot of guys that are also. And um, it's only going to make us better. I really feel like it's it's helping me up my game on the field. So Randy Gregory, and if anybody gets a chance, um, you can go to DallasCowboys.com and call up the Cowboys Hour and listen to uh, his interview, uh, he was really good, really good about talking about the team, the defense, his life being in an order, not just and – he, and he said, and he said, I finally figured out my personal life was tied to my professional life. As my personal life got in order, my professional life got in order. Uh, and as you guys can see, he's playing awfully, awfully well right now. And Boy, if he can hold down the fort till Demarcus Lawrence gets back, and you get both of those guys on the field at the same time, scary. Uh, exactly. And 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 the neat thing that uh, I don't know if anybody noticed this, but they've been doing it the last couple of days, uh, games, um, when they've gone into p- times when it's just an absolute definite passing situation, and they know that he's been getting chipped on the edge, they've moved him to a stand up, basically in the middle. And letting him hit the gaps. Yeah, he and Parsons. And they will also stunt him into the gaps. Right, or yeah. spin so him around. They're going to get him in there. They're right. going to get him in there. So yeah. uh, they're not going to allow him just to keep getting chipped on the outside. You know, I guess that's a compliment, but you know, doesn't feel like a compliment when you're getting hit. He's so fast off the line. Um, when they saw the the, uh, the sack he had on Cousins, where he actually stripped the ball and Cousins fell down on top of it. It came off so fast, mm-hmm. and he, he actually passed the quarterback, and then Had to came come back. back. And got That's just so much speed. Man. You know what's one of the beautiful things about that that allows the Cowboys to do that too is Parsons' speed at linebacker, because uh, whether yes. whether it's stunning Gregory into the middle, 
or lining him up as a stand-up rusher from there. You could also stand up Parsons, and then Parsons is fast enough to get to the outside in case they're able to to break out uh, out of the pocket right. and, and run down somebody. He's exactly. He's the one that's and right. who's helping? Scheme. The center can only help one one side, right? He can't get both, right? And, and so, so basically, yeah. Parsons can cover the edge while Gregory goes up the middle. So yeah. Gregory, uh, after he makes the sack. Then he keeps going outside, outside, outside. Then they, he gets a couple of penalties, and he, he which were BS. Yeah, B, and so he's <laughs> he's upset. The first thing he does, he he, he stunts inside uh-huh. on his own. Right, and he had to know it was coming because he ran right into Cooks. Uh-huh. Yeah, and 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 guess who was there when Cooks came out? I mean, that was Parsons. <laughs> so, Randy almost took the hand off. <laughs> he almost did. <laughs> so fast, man, so fast. But but you know, as he talked about it, really the the best thing about this interview is is the kind of what we talked about last week. How important this is for him. We talk about Dak and and coming back from and you know how monumentous that was for him just as a person to be able to come back and, and be successful after something so devastating. Well, Randy Gregory has had a couple of years where he's had to deal with not a physical injury, but this is all his making, and it's all about his mental makeup right. and his mental health. And for him to be able to come on the other side of that is one thing. To play as well as he's playing is another thing. To be considered a leader, let's just kind of back up a little bit. Right. Let's let him go at his own pace. Okay, let's let him lead by his play. He, 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 he says the right things. You know, he sounds very good when he says it. You can tell the guy's, you know, studied. Yeah, he's not, yeah. not some dummy sitting back there. This guy's exactly. very contemplative about so many things in life, and he's had that time to think about that. So, to me, let's just, do, let's just take some baby steps here. Yes, let him just be a leader by his play. Exactly. And, and just back up a little bit and not put too much pressure on him because – this is what's more important right now than, than physical. One other thing he said, and I, I hadn't heard this before, he said um, his mom and dad moved to Texas to be nice. around him, nice. to, to kind of help nice. out. And I remember um, meeting his dad when he was a, a rookie maybe or maybe the next year uh, at a preseason game. And his dad, military guy too. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> he came up to me, introduced himself, and he said, I, I just want you to know that, you know, my son's not a bad guy, and he's not a dummy. Um, and he goes, I know he's got his problems, and we're trying to work through them. And, you know, it took him a couple of years to understand his personal life and who he hung around with was affecting his professional life. And he mentioned his girlfriend, uh, how she's, you know, his rock now and uh, helps out, keeps him kind of in line uh, when he's – and then he said something about it home, and, 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 and he said something about, yeah, I've learned to listen. And Brad goes, yeah, that's a good thing for your marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Just like – it, it was, it was pretty girl. funny. But it's a good – it's a really good interview. Um, and I think we, I think we all know how important it is in any profession. When you have loved ones to support you and, and all of that, that's, that's major. Yeah. You know, you just, you just can't replace that with anything superficial. You know, because that support you have, that love you have for your family, it is real. And sometimes you don't want to hear real, you know, but you need it. And that's that's what they're there for. I, I was blessed with them. I'm sure you guys are as well. So you want to move on to right. left tackle. Left tackle. Yeah, and I didn't like that what came out of Jerry during the interview this morning on 105.3 The Fan when he was talking about Lael Collins. And he kept mentioning, yeah, and there was a spur. And he kept saying spur. Well, it sounds like. Lael Collins' ankle sprain is not really a sprain. He's got a bone spur in there that's been giving him problems. And normally, you know, if he can get through this, that's something that normally in the offseason you take care of with surgery. You go in there and shave off the spur or whatever you do. So, um, you know, they're going to see. Now, Kellen Moore said yesterday about left tackle, if Tyron can't play, he said the game plan might dictate who ends up playing there. So to so me don't, don't tell me we're talking to me the <laughs> Here we go again. the only two the only two real alternatives they have is to put Lael Collins at left tackle or you move Terrence Steele to left tackle and Collins plays right tackle. Mm-hmm. To me. 
Now, they got through the game with Nasecki in there at left tackle, struggling a lot, and even when— Struggling and strangling. Yes. <laughs> He's strangling people. Got it, got it, got it. <laughs> yes. I don't know where that comes from, but go ahead. Um, <laughs> so which do you do? And you got it, and you do it starting tomorrow. Yes, because McCarthy was asked how well did Nasecki play, and he said he did better against the run. He struggled in pass protection. Yeah, we could see that. So dogs, to me, pass protection that that's optimum when you got. I know a exactly what I do. Yeah. Tell me. Steele plays left tackle. Collins plays right tackle. And the reasoning behind that would be. When the Cowboys, the last half of training camp, maybe more, when they were practicing the second offensive line, Steele had started off at right tackle. He ended up at left tackle, and the Secchi ended up at right tackle. So to me, that was telling me they were interviewing Steele to be the backup swing tackle. Mm -hmm. It's like they knew he can play right. Now, can you handle left? I don't know what kind of grade he got out there, but that's the way they finished. So, would you? Steele has played left tackle. They both have pre- played left tackle, but, but in the NFL, but more recent in the NFL, yes. Steele has played left tackle. Right, and 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 Lale hadn't played left tackle since LSU. And we we aren't sure. You know, and Collins is coming off uh, hip surgery last year and hasn't played. Which we played. forget. Hasn't played since uh, one game since 2019, so I would put him at the most comfortable place that he would be. Um, and s- since Steele has played in this season in training camp at left tackle, you play, and you're not really switching two positions there. Right, you're you're switching one. You're switching Steele to left mm-hmm. tackle. Mm-hmm. Collins is playing going at, back where right. he he started right. off. Right. right? So it's not like you're changing two things. Right. Uh, and he's played next to Martin before. That's no big deal on the right side. Um, so if they think Steele can handle the left side in a game. But, again, credit to this coaching staff. They've compensated for uh, lack of experience. Yes, lack yeah. of talent Playing time. even. Yeah. Right? There you go. They didn't do like they did to poor Chaz Green and whoever <laughs> else they tried out there. And let me let me qualify what I just said. That comes from someone who has not seen them in practice during this regular season. <laughs> just like when I'm talking about okay, they got to get an experienced quarterback uh, in here. Well, I haven't seen Cooper Rush in practice, practice to all. know. Yeah. yeah. And so I, what Cooper Rush did on Sunday night shows you yeah, these coaches do know what they're doing. They they see uh, things in practice that uh, you know they they, they the can, media may not see exactly or may not even and, know what they're trying. And Kellen Moore that's talked right. about the game plan and he, and he said you know I, it, we didn't radically change it because I've seen what Cooper Rush could do in practice. I've seen uh, you know his composure, his poise, uh, his there ability. There were times when I wish they would have changed it. Yeah, because I'm like his dad. We need to run the ball now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still with dad. <laughs> so first and goal at the four, you yeah. was wanting to run the ball. I was, right? yeah. and so was everyone else. Yes, except, except for, for Cooper. The OC. Except for Cooper and and CD, <laughs> That's right? right? CD <laughs> wanted that that play. And we're out of time on this edition. No way oh, already. Man. But uh, there was another trade that happened since we last were on the air that affects Sunday's game. Okay. All right. Von Miller. Yes. Oh, because Denver. Of mm-hmm. yeah. So That was huge. I, I haven't seen Denver play a lot. He's been hurt, though, hasn't he? He came Dealing back He injuries? came back one game and, and vowed to, to play up to his uh, uh, past abilities, and he ended up getting injured in that game. I believe that was a Monday night or Sunday night game. So, yeah, that was recent. That was in the last couple of weeks. All right, weeks. here's the report that's out right now on it. A source with direct knowledge of the situation tells Pro Football Network that Von Miller became upset when teammates declined to kick in for his annual Halloween party. No. It's a massive affair with a six-figure price tag. That is, I, that I do know of because uh, Aqib Tlaib, you know, used to play uh-huh. there, you know, yeah. Berkner High School, uh-huh. yeah, and uh, he's gone to those parties. Yes, that is Miller's true. request for financial help came as a surprise to his teammates. They had assumed they were invited guests to the party, not co-host. Miller, <laughs> anyway. 
Yeah, that, that's I don't out know, there I don't know right about now. all that, but yes, he does have a, an annual. Sources plan. say <laughs> from, so, from but but New they didn't York post. They haven't commented on his play, right? You know, everybody yeah. is making a big deal out of all oh, the Rams now. They're going to be unbeatable. Well, you're not getting Von Miller from MVP seasons, right? Old same contract, thing, old same, contract, Bill. <laughs> same thing, you know. Same thing with the uh, old contracts coming up. Again. The linebacker from Pittsburgh that got traded. Yes, to Kansas City. He does have that. four and a half sacks this season. Okay, and he's played in one, two, three, four. I've just got him listed here: five, six, seven games. So he's, he's played he's all. Played. Okay, he I, only had thirty-three snaps. I thought he was nicked up. He only had. He got thir- injured in the game. Okay. He got injured. He had to come out of a game. Okay, Cleveland. He had thirty-three snaps. That was their last game. And um, he actually that was last week's game, and uh, prior to that, he had his maxed out at 58 snaps tw- two weeks before that against Pittsburgh. So okay, all right. Well, that was probably the game he came out. Maybe of. he yeah. can help yeah. out, but the, but Pittsburgh yeah. traded. But it's not our problem now. No, as Mike McCarthy said, if you yeah, fully right. yeah. fully approve that trade, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was good timing. One less headache to deal with. <laughs> all right, that does it for this edition of Mix Shots. When we come back on Wednesday, we'll talk about all the deals the Cowboys made by three o'clock today. Mm-hmm. Go Cowboys! This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?